G'day and welcome to the second training report for 2022. It's the 29th of January. Um, yeah, it was. I, I just think it was really beneficial to get along to back-to-back -back sessions in regards to you know viewing an open training session last Friday and then getting along again this morning. This one was a little bit longer, um, probably not as intense as last week and, and not as warm, um, although it was quite humid. Um, there this morning at Princess Park. Um, you know, I th thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so I'm going to run through a number of things in this report. Um, it will probably be a bit longer than last week's report. Um, gee, I'll tell you what, those <laughs> those bloody security guards at, at uh, Princess Park are like bloody flies to a spit roast. They're right on to you as soon as the session finishes. I, I like to do these reports at the ground just with the atmosphere. Um, as soon as the ses session finishes, they're right on to you. Yeah, you get. So I'm home now. Um, so what I'll do is what I usually do, go through the rehab, um, go through some of the players, what the players did today at training, what the coach said before training, and then I'll run through some of the questions um, which I opened up on a bit of a forum um, yesterday on my Facebook page and a number of questions which I got um, from from the followers on that page. So I'll do that. Um, the big news out of this morning, early days, was the announcement that uh, Patrick Cripps is the sole captain for 2022. Michael Voss um, announced that to the fans before the session got underway. Um, and he also announced that uh, Jacob Wiedering and uh, Sam Walsh will be joint vice captains for season 2022, which is great news, which is a relatively um, small leadership group at this stage. Um, and it's something, I suppose, that we predicted, or not so much predicted, something we probably hoped for, that we would, as soon as Doc stepped down, that we would go with the sole captaincy. Um, and it's great to see Cripper get that opportunity to captain this club in his own right. Um, and he looks pretty focused at the moment on the track, Patrick Cripps. It's a huge job. Um, and it's a big job now also for, you know, Jacob Wiedering and Sam Walsh um, in big leadership roles at the football club. And it'll be really interesting to see how both of those young players, um, Wiedering's getting along now, but uh, Sam Walsh, you know, just in his, uh, you know, the early days of his football career now thrust into, you know, a really sort of senior leadership role at the football club. Um, Voss also spoke about this session would be the last, and it was a three-hour session, would be the last in a really, really difficult and hard and strenuous training block since Christmas or since the players returned after the new year. Um, and they go on a short break. Oh, I don't recall whether he mentioned how long the players would go on a, a little break, uh, whether that's, you know, three or four days or a week or whatever that may be. But he did say this would be the last of a really tough sort of training block. And when they return, um, they'll really start to ramp up the match sim um, in preparation for the practice matches and the season proper. Um, so they were really put through their paces this morning. Um, a lot of match sim. Um, a lot of training drills, you know, a bit of tackling, a bit of running. Um, and not only do these boys have to be physically fit, which they are, but the concentration levels to be on the track. Um, and we're talking about the players arriving at the ground very early. It is their job, mind you, but, you know, they're arriving at the ground. They had a, they had a meeting. Michael Vess said they had a meeting this morning before they came out on the track. And then they were basically on the track from half past eight through to around about 12 o'clock. So it's, it's a long time. Um, to be on your feet and training. So not only physically fit, but also whether they're able to mentally, um, you know, get themselves through such a session. Let's go with the, well, the, the good news is, unlike last week, every player on the list was accounted for. Every player. Um, I made sure I ticked them all off. Um, and they were all there. Whether they all trained um, as part of the main group, it's a different story, but they were all there, physically there, we could see them. And they were all doing something. Um, and I counted, look, I might be wrong, but I've counted around about 10 train-on players at this stage. And I'll run through a few of them later on. Um, I don't know all their names, 
Um, but I've got around about 10, all vying for just the one position on the list at the moment. I might be wrong, there may be less than 10, but there's definitely, there's definitely quite a few. So the rehab group. All right, so today's rehab group. Um, Jesse Motlop, first year player who trained, pretty much did the whole uh, session last week, just, just, just did some slow running, a little bit of sort of standing ball work. Um, with Dominic Akui, who did the same last week. So both those young players, um, whether they're carrying some slight niggles, um, they didn't do a lot. Uh, we had uh, Lockie Fogarty um, in the rehab group, just did some slow running. Um, we had Liam Stocker, obviously, recovering from that syndemosis injury. He did... Some very light running at the start, then did some ball work, was kicking on his left foot. And I must say, he did join the group um, during the match sim um, and was using his voice from the sidelines and was trying to get involved. He, he looks like he's got itchy feet, Liam Stocker, and is uh, just champing at the bit to get back involved. He was definitely there. I did not see him last week. Caleb Marchbank, as he did the week before, seems to be really ramping up his running in regards to... Uh, just getting some miles into those legs, um, some fast pace running, recovering from that ACL. Uh, didn't do any sort of change of direction stuff. It was pretty much boundary line straight running from Caleb Marchbank. Um, Luke Parks, interesting one, was in the rehab group last week where he just ran. Uh, he started the skills, then did running. Um, was pretty much did running for the rest of the session. I did notice though, they were working on his kicking for a period of time. And I must say the ball drop which was a concern last year, has certainly improved. Um, so that's Luke Parks, and definitely put on a bit of weight as well. Um, really toned up, particularly in the upper body. Uh, Mark Pitnett, um, just some slow running from Big Pit uh, after doing the, 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 the whole session last week. Uh, David Cunningham, similar to um, similar to Caleb Marchbank, just straight line running, a pretty quick running at this stage. And I'll tell you what, he, he's, a, he's a beast. He has certainly put on some muscle, David Cunningham, um, and would great to see him back back in that team, um, you know, because he was really starting to show something before he did his knee. Um, he looks in fantastic physical condition. Um, and the other one that was in the rehab was, uh, I think that was about it in regards to the rehab. There was a small mini rehab group, which we thought may have been... Um, you know, a little bit of a worry there. Zach Williams, Mitch McGovern, uh, Sam Philp, all blokes who've had a number of soft in, soft tissue injuries over the journey, Chuck in Josh Honey and also young Josh Cripps all started off in what looked like a little sort of rehab group doing their own warm-up, doing their own little small sort of drill work. Um, and I was a little bit worried, but then... All five of those players end up doing the match sim, which is good news. So um, that was about it um, in regards to the blokes on the sidelines. Um, yeah, so good news from that front. Um, the train on players, uh, look, it, it's, it's impossible. I know I've got a question later on in regards to which way I think the club will go, but it's really, really hard to, to know Um who is really standing out? Um, we've got Jesse Glass McCasker, who's been on the uh, on the list before as a rookie. Uh, Josh Cripps, the younger brother of, of Pat Cripps, who's a big boy. Um, incidentally, wearing the uh, the number fourteen jumper today, uh, left vacant by Liam Jones. I wonder if that's a bit of an omen. I don't think so though. We've got former doggy Will Hayes, um, and then a couple of sort of VFL type players. Um, the likes of Alex Chinotti, who looks quite impressive, was wearing the number eight today. Um, the number 22, who wears the bucket hat, his name is Tyrese Liu, who looks quite impressive. We have Ned Kale, I think the former bomber. And a number of other players, which I, I couldn't pick up who they were, number 10, number 13, number two. Um, I have no idea which way the club's going to go. I just... I, <laughs> I've just got a feeling they might go safe and go Jesse Glass McCasker just because he's been on an AFL list before. Um, he didn't play any senior AFL football when he was a 
rookie at, at Carlton, but he's a big lad. He can fill in down back. He can go forward. He's played forward uh, once he left the Blues, and he's a versatile type. That's that's my feeling at this stage um, because none of the others are really setting the world on fire um, as far as that sort of mid-range player goes. All right. Who impressed today? Well, <laughs> I... I I don't like getting overly excited in training sessions because I've been overly excited before. But I must say, from a young player point of view, and I think if we're going to make, obviously, going to if we're going to make giant strides this season, they're going to have to be giant strides to even play finals. But if we're going to make significant strides this year, we're not only going to need the uh, the senior players to go to another level, but we're going to need some of these younger players in their first, second and third years um, to really have breakout seasons. Um, and what we saw this morning, and it's only a small sample size, and please, let's put this in context. There were three players that stood out for me in this morning's session, um, particularly in the match sim. The first one I want to talk about is Corey Durden, a little meatball. Um, this guy plays with so much energy. Um, and this I, I mentioned it in a video I did recently on why I think we made the right move of recruiting um, Corey Durden instead of James Rowe. And I was initially really a really big uh, a really big rap for James Rowe and and Corey Durden has this quiet sort of aggression about him. Um, he just goes about his work and he hunts, he hunts the opposition. He really does. And, and probably the standout, other than Charlie Curnow's one-handed mark in the goal square, probably the standout um, sort of act in today's match sim was, was a rundown tackle by Corey Durden. He's lightning quick. He's got power, um, you know, upper body strength, but also power in the hips and the legs. I suppose the area which he needs to probably focus on is being probably a little bit more proactive in finding the footy. Um, I feel at this stage, because he's so young, that he wants to hunt the man more than football. But maybe that's going to be his role over the next, say, 18 months to two years, while he still develops that side of his game. He was I thought he was really impressive in today's session. I really like Brodie Kemp down back today. Um, I think, I think we've got an exciting pro prospect. Um, I think he's going to grow into his body. He's still finding his way in regards to the pace of AFL football, even at, even at match sim sort of level, at training. Um, but he took a great mark down back. He, he showed some composure by drifting forward. He hit up a couple of leads going inside forward 50. And he looks like to be that perfect third tall defender at this stage. And I'll tell you what, there's some comp competition in that spot. Um, some real competition. McGovern, Kemp, Plowman. There's a number of players who are going to play that position or can play that position in 2022. And it's not all just going to be um, coming down to, to Lockie Plowman, though. He's got blokes really sort of vying for his position. So I thought Brody Kemp was, was particularly impressive um, today. And the other one who I think you know, it's hard not to get excited by a young player who really, he's just in his second season, but he was the youngest player taken in his draft year. Um, interrupted season last year, broke his thumb very early on, played some excellent VFL football before that uh, came to a halt because of COVID. And that is the young Western Australian, Jack Carroll. Um, this is a this is a nineteen year old who, who's built like a brick shit house. Um, I mean, I'm not saying he's he, he's he's big as in bulky. He's just defined. He's rock solid, um, and he's going to grow even more. And he seems to have this uncanny knack of just being able to find space. Um, <clears throat> there's definitely areas of his game he needs to work on. I'll get to some of those in a minute. I have got a question regarding Jack Noon from one of uh, my subscribers. Um, Sorry, Jack Carroll, not Jack Nunes, but I thought he was particularly impressive, particularly in the match sim. There were times he was at the stoppages with Sam Walsh, which is a great learning tool for him. Um, 
yeah, I just thought he was very, very impressive uh, in today's training session. So that's three young players. Um, so let's go on to the questions because I think some of these questions will, will uh, pretty much cover what took place today at training. Um, and there was a lot of match sim, a lot of match sim. Mickey D. Thanks, Mickey, for the question. Kicking skills. I mentioned last week the kicking skills were a little bit down, a little bit sloppy. I must say, mate, that they were were a lot better today. Um, I can't remember many uh, many disposals. Once again, put it in context, context. It's not the absolute heat of a round one game. We're talking match sim. Um, where the players are probably just holding back a little bit, but the, the kicking skills I thought were really impressive. George Hewitt, um, Adam Chera certainly add to that class factor in regards to ball use. Um, yeah, there were a couple of sloppy decision making. Zach Fisher at times wants to kick around the body, wants to try you know nail players lace out with low sort of searing passes. Um, but as, but as a whole, I thought the kicking skills. Um, were really good. And just on that kicking skills, um, I think there's definitely going to be a, ch a, a, a change of, of the way we play. Um, you know, more of an emphasis on retaining the ball um, rather than that long sort of safe kick down the line to a contest. Um, it's almost like we don't want to panic. Um, we don't want to bomb the ball inside forward 50 when we want to lower the eyes. And I saw that a lot of the time today. Um, some players are taking a bit of time to adjust to that. Sam Walsh, a couple of times, kicked the ball high around his body into the forward line. Charlie Kernos does it a few times as well. But I think in time, I think we're going to see a team that's willing to just lower the eyes, uh, be a little bit more composed with the football, and maybe go from a long-kicking team into a little bit more of a short-kicking team. And I thought the kicking skills today... I wouldn't say they were excellent. I think it's still an area that we really need to work on, but I thought they were a lot better than last week. Um, Mitchell Jackson um, wants to know about Lockie O'Brien, where he was playing in the match sim. He was on the wing, mate. Uh, looks really toned. It's a different body shape to what we've known from Lockie in the past. We remember that game where he played late in the season against Adelaide at Metricon Stadium. Uh, I think it was the second last game of the season. Um, it was his first game for that year, and he looked overweight. He looked anything but an AFL footballer. He looks, he looks like an AFL footballer in regards to his body. Um, played on a wing in the match sim. Uh, did some hard running. We know he is a beautiful kick, but you need to be more than just that at AFL level. He's got it all in front of him. There is a position there for him. Um, whether he's good enough to actually take that, because um, what we do know is that the wingers is such an important part of the modern modern day game. Um, there's definitely a spot there for him. Um, it's whether he's got it in him to actually take that um, with both hands, Lockie O'Brien. But for me, he looks he looks toned. You can see it in his legs. He hasn't got that big backside anymore. His arms are, are, are quite toned as well. So in regards to his fitness, okay, he looks absolutely fantastic. Um, Marcus Langson. Wants to know how Mitch McGovern and Zach Williams are going in regards to, you know, two highly paid recruits who've come across, um, who are on big money. You know, McGovern been at the club what now for three years and Williams the one, you know, didn't set the world on fire, Zach Williams, last year. And McGovern's been underwhelming in three years. It's make or break year for Mitch McGovern. Um, I don't know. I... <laughs> I tend to still worry about these two players. I really do. Um, I saw some things today where, where I don't know, there's this, I don't know. I, I don't like to use the word prima donnas, but it's almost like, it's almost like that they're easily, easily worked out of, of, of the contest or, or um, looking for an easy way out. That, that's just my impression of both boys. McGovern's playing down back. He'll be. Tr he's been trialled down back. There's 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 every opportunity to play as that third tall, and I'm thinking the the um, the Jake Lever type sort of intersect. There's every opportunity for him to do that, but it's just not going to happen because we think it should happen. He's going to have to have to fucking work for it because there's other players who want that position as well. 
Um, and the same with Zach Williams. I, I just would like to see both of these boys get um, a lot more aggression into their game. Um, some of Zach Williams' kicking is a little bit of a worry. I thought he came across from the Giants as a, as a reasonably good kick. He turns the ball over quite a bit. Um, I don't know. I, I, on what I've seen so far in the preseason, last week and this week, the news is good. Both are training. Um, whether they're training the house down, I'm not quite sure. But do we really need to, them to be training the house down right here, right now? Um, we can only base them on once the practice matches start and obviously when the season prop when the season proper starts and what we do know is Williams will play. Williams will play. He's a class player when he's up and going. But we're just gonna have to wait and see on Mitch McGovern. We really do. Because what I'm saying is if if Brody Kemp's in better form, okay, I'm not playing Mitch McGovern just because it's Mitch McGovern down back. Um, so he's going to have to perform in that position. Um, it's just not going to be handed to him on a platter. Um, Nathan Walter wants to know about Sauce and his tank. Looks fit, mate. Um, he, Nathan sort of says, is it a make or break year for, for Sauce? I just think he's going to be the ultimate swing man for us. Um, interesting today, Pitnet didn't train. Did I mention he was in the rehab group? I don't think I did. Mark Pitnet definitely didn't train. He ran with uh, Lockie Fogarty, just did some running after training last week. So it pretty much left, and I'll get to Tom DeConning in a minute, but it pretty much left young Murkoff in the ruck in the match sim up against Soss. Um, so I reckon Soss is going to be that ultimate swing man. We're going to sometimes see him up on the ball in regards to pitch hitting in the ruck. We're going to see him sometimes forward. We might even see him sometimes in defence. But he looks good at the moment, mate. Um, where we can fit him in, it's going to depend on what type of forward structure we want. Are we going to go with just Charlie and Harry um, and then really go sort of small and dynamic or do we want a third tall? Maybe we do without Mitch McGovern there. We're just going to have to wait and see. My Western Australian correspondent, Mark Orish, uh, thanks, Mark, for the question, wants to know about the wings, okay, which has been a real headache for us. Today's match, Sim, mate, pretty much the same old, same old. Nothing new. One thing we did see today in the full round match, Sim, were two four-wingers, okay? Setters opposed to Cots on one wing and Nunes opposed to Lockie O'Brien on the other. I can't say that none of them set the world on fire, but I wouldn't say anyone really set the world on fire in the, in the match, Sim. No one really stood out. Um, sets looks pretty good on the track at the moment. Looks fit, looks strong. We know what Cots gives. Can run all day. Nunes and O'Brien. If, if I'm a betting man, if I'm a betting man for round one right here, right now, um, I'm probably going Setterfield O'Brien. I'm probably going Setterfield O'Brien. Um, but that that's maybe showing not a little respect to Jack Nunes because uh, we know what he can give. So, But I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure, but, mate, but there was nothing thrown out from, from a different perspective. We didn't see Tom Williamson there. Um, you know, we didn't even see a chair or a Walsh go to a wing. It was either Setters on Cots or Nunes on O'Brien. Andrew Lake um, noticed last week that there was no Jacob Wiedering, um, Paddy Dow or Tom DeConning. Yeah, well, definitely Jacob Wiedering and Tom DeConning weren't at the club at all last week, mate. Um, both trained today. Um, Wiedering trained, did the whole whole uh, session. Both boys, I think, were in isolation in regards to COVID, and maybe one of them had it. I'm not quite sure, okay? <laughs> Don't quote me on that, but they definitely were in isolation for a period of time. Weedering was back in the fold today. Tom DeConning was an interesting one. He he trained. He pretty much did the whole work, but he trained in a red vest. So he was the only player that trained in a red vest. And he did the match sim, but he, there was no body contact, no one gave him the ball. He didn't win up going the ruck contest. Sometimes he'd drift off and have a kick with someone on the sidelines. Then he'd come back on. He'd set up in the loose man defence. And he pretty much just wandered around and no one would go near him. It was one of the more bizarre training sessions I've seen from an individual. Okay, he didn't look to be under any dru duress. Although, to me, he didn't look up and about. Okay, probably because of the fact that he wasn't involved. 
He was in the match sim, but he wasn't involved. Does that make sense? It's pretty much like, I was trying to think of it, it's pretty much like if you go to a nightclub, not that I go to nightclubs anymore, but if you went to a nightclub and the bouncer said, you can come in, you can come in, but you can't get a drink, you can't dance, or you can't talk to any girls. You can just stand there and watch. That was pretty much... Well, you can, st you can stand, not just watch, but you can stand there and maybe, I don't know, wiggle your hips or wink at someone, but you can't get involved, okay? It, 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 you just can't, all right? That was Tom DeConning today in the red vest, but it was great to see him there. Paddy Dow, who did limited work last week, did the whole work, Andrew, and, and played pretty much full-time in the match sim as a midfielder and did, did okay, did okay. I must say on Paddy, though, he is one player that hasn't physically developed in the upper body. Um, his legs have got bigger, but he's still very slight. Still very slight, particularly around the shoulders and in the arm region. Uh, Steve Musty wants to know about our small forwards, and he wants me to rank the small forwards from one to five. Um, and uh, look, I've mentioned... I've mentioned um, I've mentioned Durden. I'm a huge rap. I'm a huge rap. I've got, I've got Durden and know he's going to head to head at the moment. I've got them playing round one, um, and I've actually got them in front of Zach Fisher. If if we're going to play Zach Fisher as a small forward, I've actually got Durden and Owies in head ahead of Zach Fisher at the moment in that regards, uh, Steve. Um, Josh Honey not doing a lot at the moment. Um, sort of in and out, a little bit of rehab. You know, not quite sure what's whether he's recovering from an injury or he's got an injury that that's sort of sort of hanging around. But he's sort of in and out, a little bit of rehab, a little bit of Matt Sim in and out. But at this stage, I've got I've got the two real small guys who hunt the footy um, in Matthew Owies and also Corey Gurdon going head to head. And I've got Zach Fisher just on the outer at the moment. I really do. I, I, I don't so much fear for his spot in the team. I'm just trying to think, mate, where he fits in. Um, so that's how I rank the small forwards at the moment. Um, Luch Rizza, um, what boys have put on size? Uh, well, I mentioned Jack Carroll. I've mentioned, um, I've mentioned Luke Parks. Looks really good, particularly across the shoulders. Uh, David Cunningham is really big, obviously, because he's had that knee injury and he's, he's spent a lot of time in the gym. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the players will put generally put on size, but they're the three players that really stand out at this stage. Um, ben Hobbs, last list spot. I've mentioned, mate, Jesse Glass McCasker is my pick. Just because oh, I don't know what the others are going to offer. Josh Cripps is the interesting one. Um, young kid. Nearly 200 centimetres. Showed a couple of nice little things in in one of the match sims. Um, whether we want to keep Josh around by putting him on the list or ask him to go play in the VFL for our reserve side, we'll just have to wait and see if they see him as a long um, sort of term project type player. But at this stage, I would think, uh, Ben, that I'll have my money on jo uh, Jesse J uh, Glass McCasker. Um, <coughs> Tom Williamson, uh, Claude Ware wants to know about Tom Williamson. I, I must say, mate, I, I, I didn't mention the guy, guys putting on size, but he looks huge. I thought he lost a little bit of weight last year, Tom Williamson, but he's he. If you if you're talking about a specimen, a specimen, a pure physical specimen, and you should have seen Tom Williamson and and um, and 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 Matthew Cottrell going head to head in the running at the end of the training session. Um, I mean, we know what Cottrell can do. He's an endurance beast. But in this running, you know, Tom Williamson sprinted past him. Um, he looks a million bucks, mate. He looks unbelievable. But unfortunately, <laughs> at this stage, I think that's where it ends for Tom. Um, he's going to have to improve, one, his decision-making, two, his composure um, under pressure. And unfortunately, when you're playing in a position down back, where you require, where you require, okay, those two things, composure with the ball in hand, okay, then he ain't got it at the moment, Tom Williamson, which is really disappointing because he looks he looks the goods and we know, you know, what an awful run he had with that back injury. Um, but he's giving himself 
the best opportunity to have a really solid year because his body's strong. Um, but and what I'm seeing in the match sim, um, we're seeing those same little mistakes getting run down from behind, getting caught on the wrong side in regards to, you know, he's a, he's a one-sided footballer, sometimes making the wrong decisions. Sometimes can do some really good things, but when you're a defender, you're probably only allowed to make one or two mistakes a game, but he's making more than that. Matthew Kennedy, yeah, just just going about his work. That was from Kane Watkins. Um, I reckon he's tracking pretty well, mate, for round one on what I'm seeing. Um, I think it's really good to have a George Hewitt um, sort of tailing him at the stoppages, making him work really hard. He looks super fit. He looks a different different character to the to the, to the Bam Bam we saw when he first arrived to the club. He looks he looks like he's got his second chance. He's going to take it. Um, he's not look. He's not a superstar, but you need your workhorses, and he is a workhorse. And we know he's really good above his um, above his head in regards to a midfielder where can mark. So he's tracking really well. Jeff O'Day, outstanding question. Who is in front out of Lewis Young and Oscar McDonald? <sighs> um, this is a worry for me, a real worry. Um, I... <sighs> I, I, I don't see it with Lewis Young at the moment. I really don't. I um, I don't want him to become a whipping boy. And I think if we thrust him in, if we thrust him in too soon, I don't think we got into the football club to replace Liam Jones straight away. Let's remember he was recruited before Liam Jones decided to retire. So he's almost like he's being thrust into that position, being manned up on, you know, either Charlie Curno or, or, um, or Harry. Um... Right here, right now, it's probably as much as it pains me, I probably probably would go round one. I'd probably go Oscar McDonald. He played majority of the match sim today on Harry. Um, he gets pushed around a little bit, but at 196 centimetres, he's got 84 games under his, his belt. He's 25, 26 years of age. I think he's just got the experience to take that role. Um, but I think it's a worry, mate. I think it's a real worry, and it's going to be interesting to see how we structure up down back. I've mentioned uh, Jack Carroll, Dane Rawlings asks. I mean, Dane's a Western Australian. He wants to know how another Western Australian's going. Jack Carroll, well, he's flying, mate. He looks good. I don't know about round one. Um, probably not. I just think there's probably too much depth in that midfield at the moment. Probably a few guys with a little bit more experience in front of him, but he'll play senior football this year. There's no doubt about that. Arthur Ross wants to know about uh, a bloke we picked up in the mid-season draft last year in Jordan Boyd. I was impressed with him last week. Um, he's the best kick at the football club. There is no doubt about that. I've seen him kick the football, Jordan Boyd. Boyd from the, uh, the Footscray VFL out of Spotswood. He can, he can roost the football. Um, I think his best spot is as... I'm not quite sure if he's running capacity, um, but I think his best spot at this stage is a lockdown small defender um, who can who can win the ball on the way out and use it really well. So he's training okay at the moment. He's done both sessions, Bross, uh, Arthur, sorry, um, and he looks okay, but I thought he trained a little bit better last week. Um, Jeremy Cruz, Jesse Motlop. Well, he didn't do much at all today, mate, uh, Jesse Motlop. Um, I can't see him playing any football at all. Well, you play at VFL level, but I can't see him breaking into that team. Um, he might do it this year. Who knows? But he's a well, well off the pace at this stage. That's a bit of a wrap, guys, for today's training session. Um, a little bit of a long one. Uh, I've just sort of quickly run through. Um, anyone else who's sort of shone today? Chera looks good. You want to know about him? Looks absolutely fantastic going head-to-head. -head. Obviously, we're Welsh at times. Um... Oh, Sam Doherty, fantastic, the Doc. Joined in, joined in, just did the running last week and today joined in all the skills. Didn't join in the match sim, but did all the skill work. And he, he's playing next year. Don't worry about that. If he can stay healthy, he looks fantastic. He's put a lot of weight on, a lot of muscle, looks great. Um, Jack Martin, sorry, didn't mention Jack Martin, guys, was in the rehab group as well. That escaped me. He did sweet bugger all, Jack. Did a little bit of running and that was about it. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with uh, Jack Martin at the moment. Interesting one on George Hewitt, who a lot of people say are flying. 
Got him from the Sydney Swans and earmarked to take over possibly or potentially the role of Ed Kerno, who's at the end of his career. Absolutely putrid runner. Putrid runner. When the players were doing um, the 600 metre runs at the end of training, he was last in all of them. Last. Uh, Georgie Hewitt. So keep an eye on that. Um, Sam Philp played up forward, did a couple of nice things. Got a fair way to go, though. Um, yeah, so that's about it. And big Alex Murkoff in the ruck, the youngster, picked up in last year's, uh, the former volleyballer, did most of the ruck work. He's, a, he's as raw as a two-buck steak, Alex Murkoff. So let's hope that both Pitt and also Tom DeConning are, 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 are cherry ripe to go for round one. Catch you soon.